This evening we have a very special presentation in honor of a significant milestone in Canadian equine history. The Royal Horse Show is privileged to recognize the 250th anniversary of horse racing in Canada. To guide us through this segment of tonight's horse show, we welcome one of Canada's most iconic voices in horse racing. He has called 28 Queen's Plates and five times brought home a Triple Crown champion, the last being Wando in 2003. Please welcome Canada's voice of thoroughbred racing, Mr. Dan Loisel. Thank you so much, Steve, and uh, good evening, everyone. What an exciting year it has been for Canadian horse racing as we celebrate the 250th anniversary of the sport in Canada. And we are absolutely thrilled to be able to showcase a little bit of the history of our great sport right here at the Royal Horse Show tonight. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard me right. Horse racing in this country is 100 years older than Canada itself. In fact, the first records of organized horse racing date back to the 1st of July, 1767, on the Plains of Abraham, when a military race took place. The horse that won that race descended from the horses that compromised the royal stable of Louis Couture's. If I could direct your attention to the screens overhead, let's learn a little bit more about that first race and where it all began. July 1st, 1767, the first organized horse racing event in Canada was staged on the Plains of Abraham in Quebec City. The victory by Modesty, a mare ridden by Captain Prescott, would herald a race that celebrates 250 years of horse racing in the Dominion of Canada. The site overlooking St. Lawrence River was the Plains and Battlefield where the British defeated the French forces in 1759. Eight years later, the tradition of horse racing and wagering in Canada began its recorded history on these fields with Captain Prescott and Modesty. Details of the race, which occurred 100 years to the day before Canada's Confederation, are sketchy. Announcement of the upcoming race appeared in the Quebec Gazette, listing the post time as Five o'clock in the afternoon, precisely, the best of three heats, once around the course, each heat. Following the race, in the July 9th edition of the Gazette, the race results were described as follows. The purse of $40 was won with greatest ease by Captain Prescott's mare, Modesty. It was termed an upset. Much to the discomfiture of those who, purporting to know about such things, had wagered against her and were thereby parted from their money. The contest did afford much pleasure, and there were no accidents save that some few riders were thrown from their mounts, from which circumstance it appeared that they had suffered more fright than injury. It is from this date and that race which all horse racing in Canada has evolved. From that military race in 1767 until today, horse racing both under saddle and harness racing, have been part of the fabric of this great country. Whether on small tracks or fairs, racing on frozen rivers or the ponds, or ceremony, ceremonial races like the Queen's Plate, Canada's oldest continuously run stakes race. In fact, it's North America's oldest continuously run stakes race. Horse racing has endured, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, here on this very site, Harness racing was held as part of the Canadian National Exhibition from the late 1800s through to the mid-1900s. Canada has produced some of the best horse racing participants anywhere in the world, including names like E.P. Taylor, the Samuel family, the Armstrong family, Ron Turcotte, John Campbell, Joe O'Brien, the Filions, Armbro Flight, Dance Smartly, Some Beat Somewhere, and the incomparable Northern Dancer.
For 48 years when I heard that song, I said, 10 minutes until post time, but not tonight. Tonight, in honor of the 250th anniversary of horse racing in Canada, we welcome seven horses to the ring to complete a commemorative mile of eight laps of the arena. In total, these seven horses have earned over $1.2 million in their racing careers, and each and every one of them has gone on to a second career away from the racetrack. Leading off with the 250th anniversary flag is Calamar, an 18-year-old standard bred gelding, ridden by owner Debbie O'Brien Morin. Following his six-year racing career, Calamar continues to thrive. He and Debbie work as a team as an outrider and lead pony, leading post parades at various tracks throughout Ontario. Next up is Maple Tints and Betsy Sinclair. Maple Tints at the end of the arena there. Maple Tints is a 12-year-old thoroughbred gelding who earned over $200,000 while racing, and I used to announce his races. He is a graduate of the Long Run Thoroughbred Retirement Society and will be competing in the thoroughbred classes tomorrow right here at the Royal. Go get him, Maple Tints. Next is 13-year-old standard bred gelding, Spago Hall. Spago Hall, just to my left here, he recently concluded a successful racing career, earning over $300,000. And now, thanks to owners Don and Anita Lysheed of Bell River, Ontario, Spago Hall is a harness racing ambassador for the Ontario Harness Association Wanna Drive program, providing the opportunity for patrons at tracks to experience what it's like to sit behind a racehorse. Just like you see tonight with Sam Sovereign riding along with the young gentleman, and I, that's not Brian Tropy, but Brian is the president of the Ontario Harness Horse Association. Our next participant is Man Cave. Man Cave is a six-year-old thoroughbred gelding who earned over $175,000 in 15 starts during his racing career. He has gone on to compete in confirmation classes and under saddle classes in the show ring and was the winner of the thoroughbred confirmation class here at the Royal in 2016. This gelding's pedigree is filled with Northern Dancer's bloodlines on both his sire and his dam side and provides a wonderful example of the incredible role that the great Northern Dancer still holds in thoroughbred racing. He was Canada's first Kentucky Derby winner, and he still ranks among the greatest sires that the sport has ever known. Riding Man Cave is Sheena Ryan of Kindersby. Give us a wave, Sheena. Sheena Ryan rides at Woodbine. She was racing today at Woodbine, and she's living her dream of being a jockey. Sheena was among the top 10 jockeys at Woodbine last year, and in 2014, Sheena Ryan won the Sovereign Award as Canada's Outstanding Apprentice Jockey. Congratulations, Sheena. Great to see you here. Seven-year-old standard bred trotter Let's Leave Him is presented this evening by owner Sarah Town. Sarah's wearing her blue and white racing colors, and uh, the Ontario bred gelding is still actively racing in harness. He and Sarah compete in standard bred racing under saddle races at tracks throughout Ontario, recently winning the final under saddle race of 2017. Russ, or Trot Monty Racing, is a combination of harness racing and thoroughbred racing with horses trotting instead of galloping during their races. Next is the thoroughbred gelding Highland Bay, sired by Adina Springs' own stallion, Sligo Bay. Highland Bay concluded his racing career in 2015. He won two of 19 career starts and earned over $100,000 lifetime. He's now under the care of Natalie Roth, who rides in this evening. Highland Bay and Natalie compete in horse shows throughout Southern Ontario, and they will be taking part in the thoroughbred classes tomorrow morning right here at the Royal. Good luck, Natalie. And our final participant of the evening is Rachel Lauren, a standard bred trotter who competed earlier this week in the road horse division here at the Royal with her owner, Sebastian Hebert of Saint-Cyril, Quebec. 
But at the lines tonight, at the lines tonight in his blue and gold colors is a harness racing legend. Driver Ron Waples, a member of both the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame and the U.S. Harness Racing Hall of Fame. Ontario raised Waples has won the most important harness races in North America. He's won over 6,900 races lifetime and driven the winners of over $75 million. Ron Waples and Rachel Lauren. As the horses conclude their final of the eight laps in their commemorative mile, we invite them to line up at the center of the ring. Thank you very much. Hi, Sheena. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us this evening for a special presentation to Royal Agricultural Winter Fair President Andrew McKee are members of the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Jockey Sandy Hawley, the greatest jockey that Canada has ever produced. A member of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame and also a member of the Order of Canada, Sandy Hawley. Harness racing driver Bill O'Donnell, nicknamed the Magic Man. O'Donnell was one of the greatest drivers in harness racing history. He won every major stakes in North America multiple times and is also an honored member of the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. Bill O'Donnell. Bill Galvin, a longtime racing journalist, historian, and publicist, and his promotions transcended racing. He led a charge to bring harness racing onto the ice at Ottawa's Rideau Canal and expose the sport to thousands of potential fans. And there was a great picture of the racing on the Rideau, the harness races back in the 70s. Pierre Trudeau was there at the harness races, and in his arms is our now Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Thank you, Bill Galvin. Jim Bannon. Racing has been blessed by the talents of Jim Bannon, an educator and humanitarian and one of North America's leading handicappers and a brilliant broadcaster as well. In 2010, Jim won a, Gem Jim won a Gemini Award as Canada's best sports analyst, a great friend and a great humanitarian, Jim Bannon. Representing Samson Farm, Mark Samuel, both Mark's father, Ernie, and his sister, Tammy, as well as numerous thoroughbreds bred and raced by Samson Farm are members of the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Thank you, Mark. Representing the Armstrong family is Lenore Armstrong, wife of the late H. Charles Armstrong, both Charles Armstrong and his father, Elgin, are members of the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Their standard bred breeding farm, Armstrong Brothers, is the birthplace of many Canadian champions and Hall of Fame standard breds. In addition to major contributions to Canada's breeding and horse racing industry, the Samuel and Armstrong families are both longtime exhibitors of the Royal Horse Show. Lou Cause, another Hall of Famer, is with us tonight, and he has done it all. A builder, a journalist, an author, an historian, and an archivist, and now carries the title Director Emeritus of the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Lou Cause. And we would also like to welcome John Stapleton, the President of the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. John Stapleton. On behalf of the Canadian horse racing industry, they will present a certificate recognizing the Royal for honoring the 250th anniversary of horse racing, as well as a signed copy of a publication produced by the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame telling the story of pre-Confederation horse racing in Canada. Steve, what a great honor it is for horse racing to be here tonight at the Royal. Let's send it back up to you. Thanks again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night.
29 years in the booth and over 55,000 races call. How about a nice send-off for Dan Lozell joining us tonight at the Royal. Thanks, Dan.